Hello everyone, this video will just be a quick overview of the new version 1.1 update of SmoothShift. If you're not familiar with SmoothShift already, I'd recommend checking out my previous video which is an in-depth walkthrough of the tool. In short, it's a tool I built as an improvement on Resolve's native HSL qualifier and HSL curves, and it's built to be color space aware, to prioritize smooth selections, and to use more pleasing color models under the hood. So in version 1.1, the main addition visible in the UI is this new hue selection mode dropdown. So here I've added the option to also include the complement of your target hue in your selection. So if I just move down my width and select the skin tones, for example, then you can see that it's also including the same amount of the complementary hue, which in this case is teal. Another thing I've added to the selection modes is for every one, I've given the option to invert the selection. So here, if I click the inverted option for include complement, then Essentially what it's doing is selecting all the colors that aren't part of that complementary teal and orange color scheme. And maybe something you could do in look development, for example, would be to desaturate all of those colors. And that would sort of uh, accentuate that color scheme. And uh, maybe also I could select just the high saturated values. And what's nice about having these uh, inversions on a per channel basis, so you can select it for just the hue qualifier or just the sat qualifier, is I can still go and intuitively select the high saturated values from that inverted uh, hue qualifier. And so now, essentially, what I'm doing is quite a complex uh, selection, is selecting only the very high saturated values that aren't part of that complementary color scheme. And if I desaturate that, then I'm sort of muting all those colors that aren't part of the color scheme I want. And that can be an example of something you might want to do for look development. Okay, so those are the new selection mode changes. Another small change that I've done is I've inverted the direction of the hue shift and hue qualifier sliders. So for example, if I push this hue shift to the right, you can see in the vector scope that it's shifting all the hues clockwise. And this was done to just be more consistent with Resolve. Uh, previously, it would moving it right would push that counterclockwise. And that doesn't line up with, on the primaries tab, the, the direction the hue changes here. Another small thing I've done is increase the maximum value of the hue shift. So you can now shift the hue a little bit further than you could in the past. And it's worth noting that you should be careful with this because this does allow you in some situations to fold the hues. So if I go to a hue ramp, for example, and I'll just disable the DRT, then if I select, say, a very small range of hue and push this hue shift to the maximum, then you can see that it is introducing some form of folding here where you're getting this teal cyan color uh, sort of in between the blue. And sometimes this is actually what you want in some very specific situations in color grading. Uh, so I do allow this, but it is something to be aware of and to make sure that you're not overdoing the hue shift, at least especially when your qualifier width is really small. The good thing is oftentimes if you're just pushing your hue and changing it visually to, to what looks good to you, you're often not going to introduce too much of a shift that will break the image, but there is the possibility here to go a bit too far, so be aware. Hey everyone, uh, real quick, it's been a day since I recorded the rest of this video, and Resolve version 19.1 has just released, which adds the ability for DCTLs to show these informational tooltips when you mouse over the options. So real quick, I've also included this in the new version 1.1 update of SmoothShift. Uh, so if you update to the latest version of Resolve, you should also be able to see these tooltips while you're using version 1.1. And that's pretty much it. Uh, beyond that, I've just made some minor compatibility tweaks in the code. And I've also updated slightly the way the additive, spherical, and subtractive saturation options uh, are applied. But for the most part, that's version 1.1. So feel free to download the free demo at the link in the description if you haven't already. And if you own SmoothShift, you should already have the new download sent to you by email, so just check your inbox. Uh, and as always, if you have any questions, issues, or suggestions, just leave a comment or send me an email, and I'm happy to discuss. So thanks all, and see you next time.